Hello, we are the L3 Harris Cloud Data Team. My name is John Thompson and I will be giving a quick introduction. For our project, we created a free open source cloud data storage service that is scalable and easy to deploy. This service allows companies like L3 Harris, which would like to use a cloud data storage service while maintaining security and proprietary data risks and restrictions. For our project, we focused on creating a data management service that can accept any message containing dynamic data from other programs through gRPC and insert them into a NoSQL database. In addition, we also designed the project in a Docker container architecture to ensure the service can be deployed at scale. Our closest competitor is then Google Firebase. Google Firebase does something very similar, except for you have to pay Google Storage Cloud costs and you don't have as much customizable ability. For them, you are paying for the storage of the data and you have limited numbers of writes and reads, all of which they will start to charge you if you exceed those limits. Our system, you can host on any of your own internal servers. You can run it as many times as you want with any amount of functions that you want, have any amount of users, fully customizable. And all of that is at your own cost. So if we were to run one of our clients for four days on Google Firebase, it would cost us an approximate $18,000. All right. Now that we've gone ahead and covered the intro, I'm going to cover a bit more in depth on to how our product works. So our server can be ran on any device. The server can be ran on Mac, Windows, or Linux. And once you're running our server, you can communicate it through protobuf communication through any language that supports gRPC. Um, gRPC is commonly used in a lot of languages. So ultimately, you can use almost any language to communicate with our server to insert protobufs into the server. And I've talked a lot about protobuf communication, but I haven't completely described how it works. So how that works is we have our server, and it has a generic .proto file. And that works as sort of the API for our server, and it defines how you will communicate with it. So to start, communicating with our server, you'll have to get a copy of the generic.proto and give it to your client. And this will enable the client and the server to communicate with each other. Once you've done that as the client, if you want to start sending data to the server, you have to declare another data.proto. And in here, you'll just go ahead and declare all your data types that you want to have put into the database. And then you just provide the server with a copy of this code. The nice thing is all you have to do is provide it with the data.proto. You don't have to rewrite the server in any way. You just provide it with this file and it immediately works. And once you do that, they can go ahead and communicate with each other. And this, how it does this is it takes your data.proto and it packs it in to the generic.proto when it sends a message. And then once the servers receive that message, it uses that same definition you gave it to unpack the message. And then from there, it just sends a response back to the client saying that it received the message. And then everything works from there. All right. Hello, my name is Blake, and I will be demoing our CSV client, as well as some basic CRUD functionality of our overall framework. Um, what you see on the screen is kind of a high-level overview of how our framework works. So now the whole purpose of our system is that it all start and uh, stop with the push of one button, or in this case, one command. So if we do Docker Compose up and run it in the background, we see that it'll create our Docker cluster. And so when we go over to Docker, we can see that all our separate containers are running together and that they're all talking with each other. So now I will demonstrate the CSV client and some of the basic CRUD capabilities um, that we have. And so we will connect to the Ubuntu image and get our server running by first running our make file, which will get all our protobufs set up. Now if we run our server, we run our CSV Python script, which is our CSV client. Oops. 
Right now we're connected to our server via our Python client. Um, and just to show off, we have, I have db here pulled up here, which is connected to Trino, which is then connected to Scylla um, so that we can visualize the data. It's kind of just a helpful tool that we have. We can see all the key spaces here. Uh, right now there's nothing important in there. So through our uh, CSV client, we do an add all. It will pull data from a CSV file and upload it to the database. So if we take a, we tell this to refresh, we can see that it has made a key space and it has also imported all the data and we didn't have to do anything. All we had to do was specify in the protobuf the different fields and it automatically put all this data in here. And it's just a pretty wide data set in general. For some basic CRUD capabilities, we can query. Uh, let's go by birth rate. And where it's like negative one, we'll see that it spits out nothing. So if we were to query again, um, birth rate, we query by zero, it'll return basically all the values um, that are right here. Uh, now we are also able to delete stuff just as easily. So let's, again, just go by birth rate. It'll delete all the birth rates that have zero in it. And lastly, just as easily as we were able to make this key space and table, we were able to completely drop the table. So if we run into delete all, it will now drop that entire table. If we refresh this key space, it is gone. Uh, just as easily as our entire framework was able to go up, it will be able to come down. So if I just do Docker compose down, it will shut down that whole uh, Docker cluster very gracefully and clean kind of everything up and make sure that the data that needs to persist will still persist. That shows the overall functionality of our framework as well as our CSV client and some of the basic applications that that has along with it. Another example we have is a thermal imagery camera that's on a Raspberry Pi that we have sending its imagery to our system to, and ultimately to distill the database. And the highlight of this is that it is maxed out for our sensor and our system and our database can handle everything full speed that we throw at it. For our tech stack, we are using gRPC and protobufs for our inner process communication. We have everything running on our Docker container, and that allows us for that virtualization and containerization aspect. For our database, we're using a Scylla, a NoSQL database. For our database analysis, in order to run CQL and SQL queries, we use Trino, and that is part of our Dockerized container. For our software language, we start out with C++, but we moved to primarily using Go. And that allows us to have a seamless and a single, uh, essentially a single company source for that IPC, as well as for our internals. So in conclusion, we have had the opportunity to uh, work with our awesome sponsors to be able to create this, this independent, platform independent, agnostic, fast, efficient, containerized, backend system that can handle any sort of data you throw at it. I'd like to acknowledge our fantastic professors and RTAs, as well as, last but not least, L3Harris. Thank you.